speaker, though. I don't know if anyone has a personal story or the story of a friend that they have the permission to share how they found out they had breast cancer or they, how they went about doing their investigations. Anyone would like to share today? Well, for those of you who don't know, we lost our mother of this church, Sister Holdsworth. She had breast cancer. Um, we have quite a few members who have been affected going to, through treatment. Um, it's not something you can look. We had a little laugh on Friday when I was at work. We laugh, not because we don't understand the seriousness of breast cancer, but in adversity. Yeah? So someone came to visit us. We were in the ICU, and she said she's coming out of theta. And she said she was at a tummy tuck. A tummy tuck is when you go and take out the fat out the belly and you grip up your waist again. But she said, you know, they did it because the lady had breast cancer. She took off both breasts. And one of the ways that they do the reconstruction is you get a nice tummy tuck because they take the fat from the belly and pad up the breasts so that it look normal again. So, yes, she lost her breast, but no, 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 go shape like her when she come out of hospital. Because she have a tucking belly, and she have a pad up breast, and she look really nice. So, even in adversity, yes, you can still, f and we laughed because, you know, she started off saying she coming out of theater, they went to do a tummy tuck, but it was a tummy tuck of necessity. Because that's where they took the fat from to augment the breast, to, you know, to give her back, make it look normal again. All right. So, anybody else would like to share? Well, probably I should ask how many of you in here. All right, sister. Yes, that can be done. You know, they didn't know they take the fat from your belly to put it to your breast. Because I know somebody who do breast cancer, and she oh, she, hair is flat. So, okay. If you are the average age in Jamaica now, where somebody have breast cancer is like forty, yeah, even have younger. We had a teenager the other day, eighteen year old, and she had breast cancer to take off. But the younger you are which is what we see in our population, the more you want to look, you know, as normal as possible. So the older persons might use um, prosthetic things, might have false breasts like the, in the bra or so, but for the younger ones, they want it to be more permanent or look more natural, so they will go for the, the tummy tuck and the breast augmentation. But yes, they take the fat from... Not just the belly, that's the most common place though, because many of us women tend to carry a little fat there, but they can take it also from other places, but it's the most common place that they take the fat from. Yes, any? All right. Yes, my dear. When they are taking off the breast, they leave the skin. They leave the skin. Sorry? When they are taking off the breast, they leave the skin in place? Yes, that's right. They leave the skin in place like they can. Remember, it depends on how invasive the cancer is. That's how they term it. So if it's very invasive and it's affecting the, the, the skin and it going to the armpits and so sometimes everything and then you have to kind of pull it back together. Oh, because you say put in the fat, I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling in this, the same breath, I was saying to the person that came from theater and told us about the tummy tuck that man must go to hell because there are so many things. <laughs> the, the man has done <laughs> so many things. The only thing man can't do right now, I'm telling you, is blow breath into man. <laughs> because they have taken the way how medicine has evolved and where technology is, they can do so many things. We were discussing in the same breath about 
the areola. You know, sometimes when they take the breast, they have to take that dark area. And that is really why the breast looks how it looks. And, you know, we're discussing, you know, how, you know, sometimes they try and save it. Sometimes they can't. And somebody was there and she said, you know, sometimes they put on a permanent tattoo. So they tattoo on a nipple so that the breast looks more natural. <laughs> yes, yes, Sister Martha. Just to say that some women, when they, like for my grandmother, she felt the lump in her breast and she was there rubbing with healing oil. Yeah, in Jamaica, for a ginger while. tea, mint tea, and healing oil cure most things. Yes. <laughs> so sometimes women, I don't know, maybe because it's a private area, they tend to kind of not share it and and so just to but just to say that um when 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 we have our loved ones and we see them going through breast cancer just to encourage us to really nurture them yes. really nurture them that is all you know because i remember even somebody that i cared for that had breast cancer and i mean it it, at the time, it did look like a lot was left on me. And I went down to public with the person. And, and the lady who was in the one other section, she said, you know, just do it. Just serve with the right heart. And, just, and, and, and I look back now and being there for that person, it, it's really, I, I learned so much about life. I learned so much about suffering. I mean, even... Even if I have work to do, I remember this is my mother-in-law who I had to care for for a while while she was in our struggle. But I remember one of the things she said to me um, when I was there hesitating to do some chores. And she said, if I did ever have the amount of energy where you have I would and get up and tear down this place. And I'm saying, you know, we sometimes just take so much for granted. And she literally had no energy. I should start to choose us so tired. So, you know, whenever we are caring for those who have breast cancer, just to take care of them and to, to do it with the right attitude because there is so much that you will we'll, we'll get in return for caring for them. Okay, thank you, Sister Martha. Um, I don't want to go into the speaker's um, presentation. I don't know what it looked like. But since we're here, how many of us in here as women are one of the things we should understand was that I'm happy we have a few men here because we have a few men who do have breast cancer because contrary to popular belief, men have breasts and not just chest. All right? Yes. So we do have a few men, but yes, it's most. So there are how many women in here? I'm going to say there are more than 21 of us in here as women. Uh, I count too much. Yeah, there's more than 21 of us. So, the numbers, ladies, doesn't look good for us. It's somewhere between one in seven and one in nine. So, if there are 21 of us in here, that means at least three people in here, except for God, thanks, except for God's grace, at least three people in here, based on the numbers, should have supposed to yeah based on the numbers so it's very 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 serious i am sorry more of our ladies didn't come out but we are still going to press on and talk about this very important topic there are a few people in here look like them younger than 25 younger than 30. i see a smiling don't bother with it <laughs> yes so all of us in here, except for about four or five people, should have had a mammogram. 
I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm just going to say that after our presenter is finished today, that you would have made some changes to your life. Yes? Yes, Mother Tinling. Yes, dear Sister Dion. All of those very important questions, we're going to wait for our presenter. We're just talking about that is going to come out in the presentation. I am sure, Hi. Sister Dion. Yes? So, there are a few people here who are going to speak. So, our presenter has two, three minutes to one. I'm sure she's here. Yes? So, she'll soon come up here. Oh, yes, yeah, she's here. I'll introduce. Just tell me when you're ready and I'll introduce you. But before... <laughs> Before we get there, so last year, about February last year, I was doing my, I don't think I was even checking, you know, when you're showering or so you're probably just happen upon or something and it feel not right. So last year, about February, um, maybe some of you don't know, but last year, February was a rough year. My, my... It was, it was, we were in COVID and it was just, a, you know, we've, we've had a rough two years, but some people last two years did rougher than some people own. So I was just showering or so and I feel a little lump and I said, what is this? You know, it was close to that time of the month. So, you know, sometimes things change. So I said, I wait until the next month, which is March. And I say, boy, you know, it's still there. I need to go to my mammogram. So I went and did the mammogram. So I'm just telling you how some things can progress. So I went and did a mammogram. And when I did the mammogram, the doctor said, you know, we can't really tell what this is, you know. You, you know, it looks, there's a lump, it looks suspicious, but we can't tell what it is. So we're going to send you to do an ultrasound. So a doctor has to write up a request for an ultrasound. So you can walk into a lab and do a mammogram but a doctor has to write a request for an ultrasound so i went and saw the doctor and i got the request for the ultrasound and i went and did the ultrasound and he was like boy you know we can't really tell what this is you know we know it's a lump but as to what it is we're not sure you know but it look you know it looks suspicious so we're gonna send you to do and MRI. Just the, I know many of you maybe have never done an MRI. It's this machine that looks like a coffin and you go and lying in it very still and if you breathe too hard you have to start over and it takes between 45 minutes to an hour to do this test. So he said, you know, you're going to have to do an MRI but you're also going to have to do a core biopsy. So we're going to have to take a piece of it and see what it looks like to tell exactly what it is. So I went and did. You should know too that there are not a lot of places in Jamaica and maybe two places in Kingston that does a breast MRI. So when you hear about contributing to the cancer society and those things, it's not a frivolous thing. We, we love to say the government, the government. But you know, I am one of those persons who believe like as people, we also can, you know, make a contribution mm -hmm. to make all of our lives easier. Yeah, it is somewhere between 80,000 and 100 and something thousand to do a breast MRI. And if I never get an appointment in Kingston because it was so urgent, I'd have to drive to Mobe to do it. Yes, so money is a problem. And it's pr that's privately because this isn't done at the Cancer Society. So I went and did the MRI, went and did the core biopsy. So a core biopsy is they take this big needle, it's not a little needle, all over the injection, and they, on the ultrasound guidance, the, the image where the lump is, 
the put in the needle, take off a piece of it, and send it to the lab to see what it is. So I had my exciting year last year. But when we got to about, so we started in about February, we got to about June and July, and I hadn't said anything to anybody, and I was just quietly going through. And you know, if you know me, I can, I feel I can do anything. <laughs> as long as I think it, I can do it. But I got to about June, and the pressure is on because I've done the MRI now, waiting to go for the appointment to do the core biopsy. I'm at D day. So I called my sister, she lives in Canada, and immediately she said, Marsha, let us call a family prayer meeting. We're going to pray. And we, I had the, was to do like the biopsy, the when, the, when the Thursday was a biopsy, and that was our first family prayer meeting last year, I think July on a Wednesday. I must tell you, since then, the Lord knows how to get us to do, we've had a family prayer meeting every Wednesday since July last year <laughs> on Zoom. <laughs> my brother, my sister's in Canada, my brother lives in Ochi, I live in Kingston, my parents in Mobe, and we meet on Zoom every Wednesday. You know, every now and then something happens, you can't meet. But every Wednesday for the last, you know, over a year, because I called my sister and said, we, you know, I'm having this situation. We prayed. Yes. The, the, it's, guys, the, the, the message today, don't take it lightly. Was, when I came in, I heard it. I said, my God, opportunity, adversity. Yes? So I did my core biopsy. And you wait a good while for that result, you know. So you're sweating <laughs> while this. Anyway, I got my result and, you know, went to the, the doctor and, you know. And he said to me, Boy, Marcia, look like you play lots of. So I said, no, you know, but I know how to pray. I know Jesus. <laughs> and that's what he said to me because, you know, I think by this time, everybody was like pretty much sure this is, my, this doesn't, this, I mean, that's all they kept saying, you know, this doesn't look right, doesn't, this doesn't look right. But thank God it was just a fiber adenoma. Our presenter will probably speak about it. A fibro adenoma is just a tissue as you get older, the tissue grows and it, you know, causes lumps and stuff, but it's not malignant, not cancerous. And she'll talk about all of those terminologies. Yes, so the point I'm making though, if you never go to do, the mammogram is a first line defense. Yeah, it's the, it's the test of choice. Once you get to age 40, you should do a mammogram annually. Sometimes for years it shows nothing, but there is a radiographer, I really love her. She, I'm not going to tell her where her business is because I think she's just awesome. Um, Precision in Crossroads, she's really, really quite good, Dr. Cornwall. And she, a lot of people invite her to different places to speak, and one of the things she say, well, even when you go in her office, cancer is like a thief, and if, as you get older, and your bars get weaker, the teeth always trying to pry to come in, you know, but as you get older and get weaker, it's easier for the teeth to pry the bars open and come in. So you have to be on constant watch for the teeth, and you do this by doing your mammogram annually, making sure you're doing your self-breast examinations, and making sure, because remember these numbers I tell you, but for God, great, that's one of us. Yes, I don't know if it's in the water, we drink the food, we eat, but we just seem more susceptible. susceptible. Yes, Sister Marsha. Okay, so Sister Martha is saying she thinks older women tend to not pay attention. But you know that most of the people we see are older women, are older women. They get to, I think when you get to about 50 or so, you get kind of realize that, oh, you know, it's downhill from here. Let me do the checks and see how I can, <laughs> you know, live until um, three score years and 10 and if by reason of strength. 
I think it's the younger women, the women 40 and younger, who in the prime of them life, those are the women, 45 and down, who I think really neglect. The older women, I think by they get to 50, I think they really start to pay more attention to doing their, I hope I'm not, you're not making a liar out of me in here, you know, and those of you over 50 are doing, it's true. When you, you never business with that, see, she confirmed, she said when she never get sugar, she never business. No one should reach up fifty. <laughs> um, that is so true, Sister Marsha, because um, when you're up over before you reach that age fifty and enough, you know, you think you have it all together. But it was Dr. Gordon who is um East Kingston basic school zone doctor. He came to one of our workshops and he said that we should have these checks. So I used to hear people say, Mama Graham. Don't go to the society because when them done with the poor breast, you don't know, have none. And me no say, but me not have none already. Me can't manage. But I went to a woman's place up there. And my first experience, I was like, them people are lying. Yeah, it's a little bit uncomfortable, yes, you know, because, you know, to get under the arm. But I find out that every year I try to do my mammogram. It was Friday, I had an accident at workshop. I was passing something and I hit up my, I hit my breast. And Sister Marsha, listen to me. My rub it to the olive oil come and say, cancer, you're not come here, sir. It not work. I feel some pain. And I even said that, you know, I'm still going to do my mammogram because I should have done it from March. But from the advice of Dr. Gordon, I did that, that one let them call, call on us. Colonoscopy. Yeah, I did that one. Once you get to 40. Once you get well. to 40, I did that one, and I did the endoscopy as well. So God be the glory. The doctor said I don't have to do it again until the next five years, but I ensure that every February, I do my female executive. Every November, I do my pap smear, and every March, I do my mammogram. And my pap smear come back, you know, inconclusive. Me say, God, I want this. Because, you know, I me say, God, what is? But in all, ladies, trust me, don't spend your time working the money and save it. Because when you're over 50 going down, you're going to spend it. So do the checks now and eliminate what can be eliminated and just put the rest in God's hand. Or we can find out early when it's easier to manage and not when you reach, because our presenter, I think, is coming, but she will tell you the rest about what stage in Jamaica we usually find breast cancer. Any cancer, Moses, because as a population, as a people, we're not very health conscious, and we're not always thinking about the thief that is trying to break into our house and to take us early. All right? So... I think our presenter is ready, so I'm going to introduce her. So our presenter today, one minute, I'm going to get her to come up. Is that ready? Oh, I wasn't sure if I said you're ready. Sorry, I'm going to come up. Ready? All right, sorry for the delay. We're just trying to see what position she best wants to stay in, standing or sitting. 
All right, so our presenter today is Dr. I, I want to call her right now. That's why I'm looking for this. I have this on the paper. Dr. Sheena Marie Roden McLean. But everybody here call her Kimberly. So I had to look and make sure that I call her name right because nobody don't know. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Roden McLean. She is a general practitioner. No, I shouldn't tell you that. Very, very important. She's a wife and a mother of two rambunctious little boys. And I want to tell you that because you must have mercy. When you hear about people with two boys, you must look on them different. All right? So I want you to look on her different. Two rambunctious little boys she have, all right? She's a general practitioner. So she's one of those doctors that you probably see, you go to see the doctor, she's one of those persons who probably going to first do a breast examination on you. Because for whatever reason, as women, we are afraid to check our breasts ourselves. But it's ours. All right? So she's here today to give us some insight and some much-needed advice about how to, we're not sure about the preventing part, but how to identify how to reduce the risk and that sort of thing. So please big, give a big, sorry, she is the daughter of our own Pastor Roden. All right? <laughs> so I'm going to invite her this time to give her a big round of applause as she comes. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, everybody. Yes, I know it's my name is tricky for everybody. You call me Kim, some Kimberly, some Fluffy, some y'all have your names for me, but my mother and my father gave me Sheena Marie, then Kimberly, then Roden, then we added the McLean. So all of that is still on my papers. Amen. <laughs> all right. Um yes. We're talking about breast cancer today. Um, I didn't hear all of the, the discussions you were having before the talks, but I hope that when I'm finished with the presentation, um, you would have had most, if not all your, or all, if not most, your questions answered. Um, I do accept questions during, unless it is, it gets to too many questions, but I do accept questions during, because I like when we can interact and properly understand what we're saying, okay? All right. We're ready? Or must, I must just go ahead? All right, I'll start. Heavenly Father, I want to tell you thanks for today. Um, thank you for this presentation that we're about to make. God, I ask that you step in open our eyes, open our hearts and our minds, that we'll be able to understand what is happening. Help me to make it simple enough and, and intense enough for who needs it simple, who needs it intense. God, help me to reach who you need to reach, get to today. Understanding, let it be clear. Lord, you said that we should ask for understanding and you give it liberally today. We ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, that we will be able to understand this thoroughly to make our lives a lot better. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay, so, breast cancer. It is basically abnormal cells, abnormal tissue found in the breast. That's, that's, just, that's the bottom line to it. Now, the breast is not just what we see here. Breast tissue goes all the way up under the armpits as well. People always, well, normally ignore that part because you think it's just what the two things that we see here. It's more than that. I also want to point out that breast cancer is not just women. Men get breast cancer. Men also have breasts. They're not as big as us women, but... One of the rambunctious. Okay. All right. So, yeah. 
let me just say, you must look at me in a different light, right? <laughs> if I had both of them, I'd probably have on both sides right now. All right. Um, David, Mr. Reclama, Cardinal, Cardinal Reclama. text him don't reach me yet all right so um i skipped a bit but let me just jump back there's a verse it says proverbs 5 verse 19 let her breasts satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love just pointing out that breasts are loved and they are in the bible we have gotta cherish them they have use based on the bible the bible said so all right Amen. <laughs> All right, so we spoke about, I remember I said that we can't forget the men, right? But it is most common in women. Unfortunately, one in 21 women in Jamaica will be diagnosed with breast cancer. That's a lot. Because if we count how many women in here, I don't know, reach 50 about that. So at least two out of who in here, you know, based on the numbers, can be, will be diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's something that we, it, we need to be aware of. We need to have it in our heads that anything is possible. The survival rates of breast cancer, it has, it's over the years, it's getting better. So we're having more survivors than people who are dying. I know that breast, once you say cancer, everybody goes, <gasps> because you think, no, we're gonna, we're all gonna die now. But there are more women surviving breast cancer than there are women dying. So there is hope. And I don't, at the end of this, I want you to understand and get it that there is hope. Until your very last breath, there is hope. Okay. Early detection, that is what has been making the survival rate a lot better. Because we're talking more about it, more women are doing more about it earlier than later, and so we have more people getting treatment earlier, surviving earlier, better, longer from breast cancer. It's not the end of the world. Well, yes it is, but not breast cancer. <laughs> All right. Now, one of the common things, how you know or even suspect most of the women that have an issue, they talk about a breast lump. You can hear me? Hello. What did I do? Hello. Can you hear? No. Hear me? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. So most, most times what they feel is a breast lump. And how they feel it, they actually in tune with their breast. So if it's even one day they just pass by and go, hmm, something felt off there. Then we examine and we realize it's a lump. Some people feel pain. Then they reach to the doctor. Some people end up seeing a change in the size of the breast. How the breast look, reach to the doctor. You see changes in the skin. So you, you know like... The oranges, there's a term that we call in medicine called peau d'orange, meaning it's French for the skin of the orange. So when you look at the skin, how it's gritty, gritty, and that holy, holy look, when there is a lump in the breast and it starts to draw on the skin, it gives that orange skin look. So it porous. Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> All right. Um, for us black people, it might not be so evident, but if you're a lighter in complexion, you can actually see a redness in the skin. So you see a little red, red area and you're, it looks suspicious, we reach the doctor. Um, one not so common uh, symptom is a discharge from the nipple. It doesn't, you shouldn't really have a discharge from a nipple unless you're breastfeeding. 
There are some women though who have milk coming from the breast that's not breast cancer. But my thing is, every doctor's thing is, once you see something coming from the nipple, if you're not breastfeeding, check it out. If it's water, if it's milk, if it's blood, see your doctor. It might not be breast cancer, but it might be something else that we need to address. So anything else outside of breastfeeding, if you see anything at all, find your doctor. The causes, a lot of it has to do with our genetics. So being African, that has a lot to do with it, which all of us right now, right? Or environment, the hormones. A lot of women are on hormone therapy, whether it is the birth control pills or, um, well, yes, it's birth control. So some take it for birth control, some take it for uh, acne issues, some take it for um, menstrual issues. So the same hormone contraceptive, whether it's the pills, the injection, whatever. Once it's hormones, those have those have a part to play in your risk factors for getting breast cancer. Lifestyle, exercising, eating healthily. We're not really doing much of those these days, and I'm, I'm being very honest, and I put myself in the category. Generally, as a nation worldwide, we're not eating like what our great-grandparents used to. We're not as active as our great-grandparents. If we can get there, that would make our lives a whole lot better. Being female, we said yes, that's a part of one of the greatest risk factors, but not that you're a man means you cannot get breast cancer. Because remember, men have breast tissue too. Don't forget that. Increase in age, the older you get, yes, you have an increased risk. Doesn't mean that you as a 20 something, 30 something cannot get breast cancer. You can. So you have to be aware that you are at risk. If you've had a previous breast mass, so yes, you get a mass today, you check it out. When you go and you get your test done, they said it's not breast cancer, but they took the lump out. And there are other, there are different types of lumps. You have what we call benign lumps, which means they're not cancerous, they're just a growth, and you have malignant, those are the breast cancer ones that we talk about. So if you have a ben what we call a benign lump, then yeah, you, you feel happy because it's not breast cancer today, but the fact that you've had a lump now, you are at risk for another lump, which you're going to have to be you know, vigilant about it and just Keep checking just to ensure that it's not cancerous, right? Family history. Every time that a patient comes with a lump, I always ask them, anybody in your family have cancers? It don't have to be a breast cancer, any form of cancer, whether it is cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, colon cancer, liver cancer. You just, just tell me, say, there's a cancer in the family. I want to know about it. But... 90% of the people who come with breast cancer, they don't have any family members with it. So you might be jolly well walking around and you say, but I don't have nobody in my family with it. That don't mean you can't get it because there are other factors that put you at risk. Other factors, right? Radiation exposure, you know, always minimize how many x-rays you get done um, radiotherapy, any of those, I mean, back in the days we used to worry about the microwave, all of those radiation. I don't think we worry so much about it now because they've, have, they have adjusted or improved on technology as to how much radiation is exposed out of the, the microwave setting, but radiation in general puts you at risk. Obesity, anything more than yeah? <laughs> Obesity puts you at risk. I remember we spoke about the lifestyle before, so the healthy eating and the exercise. 
we just need to put a little bit in, a little bit in until we get more and then we can get to, yeah, man. I, yeah. It's, we are talking to each other. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. The sugar, that is in the, the dieting, right? Sugar plays a huge part. It tastes good, but... Mm, mm-hmm. Excessive alcohol intake. Great. <laughs> All right. So we had a little bit of alcohol. No, it's not going to come. It's not going to come. Go to Grand Grand? No. Okay, he'll stay. All right. So, alcohol intake. When you're always drinking, and I know that is not a part of us in this church. No, excessive alcohol. We should not be a part of that because that puts you at risk, right? So, not in Greater Grace Temple. Amen. We, let me expand a little on the hormonal involvement. Um, hormones, having excessive hormones. So if your body, as a woman, is not getting a break from your hormones, you are at a higher risk. That is how the hormones have a, have a, play a part in breast cancer. So if you're starting your periods later, you start, you started actually before, and most of us started because we're starting at 10 and 11, right? The, long, the earlier you start and the later you end, that puts you at a higher risk because you have a longer time of hormone just working through your body, no break. Your menopause in at 56, 57, 58. Yeah, I have a, I have a patient who, she's like, boy doc, I just saw, she's 57. And <laughs> she's going on on our merry way every month seeing her menstruation my heart is with her (laughs) um first child having your first child after 30 so you see that big gap because you're starting from 10 and you're having a child after 30 that's a long time of just hormones running never never ever ever been pregnant that's another risk because you don't get a break yet after you reach menopause and you start having the menopause symptoms, you're having the hot flashes and everything just down for you, having all these symptoms. And doctor said, boy, I'm going to have to give you a hormone therapy. I don't really put my patients on it. I don't have any patients on hormone therapy because I try to go the natural route in treating your symptoms. But there are some patients, we can remember one size don't fit all. But there are some patients who their symptoms are just too much to bear and they're going to need something. So if you have to get hormone replacement therapy, you just have to, but know that you are at risk for other things. Okay? How can we prevent or early detection, we would say, for breast cancer? self-examinations i heard you talking about the self-examinations women men we should be doing this every month how are you going to know if something is wrong if you don't know when something is right you have to know what your breasts feel like they are yours your body nobody can know your body for you more than you so every month is yours When you're in the shower, you're not in the shower, you're lying down, you're having your breakfast, they're yours. Feel them, touch them, go around them. You got to know them so that when you do this one day, you say, that wasn't there yesterday. That's early. But if you've never touched them, other than when you're bathing and you're just over them and move on, and then two years later, you feel something. That's two years of growth that you could have felt one month later and gotten treatment earlier. Understand? But you have to know your breasts. Men, thank you, Brother Vernel. I saw that. <laughs> you have to know your breasts, right? Um, 
I, when children come, when the teenagers come for medicals, I sit them down in front of their parents and I show them how to do their breast examination because most, how are you going to know what to do? You come to the doctor, that's a part of it. I don't get to do it with you when you come just to talk about your toe or your scalp or whatever as an adult. But when you come to do your medical, I'm going to show you as a teenager how to examine yourself so you get to know yourself as you go along through life. If you come to the doctor as an adult, let's get it done. Yes, I'm going to examine it for you, but I'm also going to show you because when you leave the office, you need to know what to do for yourself. All right? Some people don't come to doctor in years. So you can't wait until you reach doctor to get an examination. Right. Also, I heard about the menstrual times. During menstruation, the breasts get lumpy. So if you only touch your breast when you're having menstruation time, you're going to feel lump and you're going to have anxiety and you're going to be flipping over the place like, oh my God, what's going on here? But that's because you should know your breast outside of menstruation. So get to know it during and outside of menstruation. It's totally different. Totally different. So we'll always advise examination halfway between the periods. That's when things are most normal for the breast. Right? Um, we touched on the healthy diet, Sister Martha gone. The sugars, sugars are a lot. So if we can lessen those, lessen to none, that would be great. Lessen the fats that we eat, increase our fruits and our vegetables and water. As we talk about water, I'm not bashing anybody. Let me just state this, but cran water is not water. Disclaimer, I'm not bashing cran water, but cran water is not water. It is sugar. <laughs> if you take up a bottle and look at the back with the carbohydrates and the sugar, you're going to see that it has just as much as a soda or a juice or it is sugar. All right? That's just marketing. We call it water. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, exercise. We try to encourage at least 30 minutes you can start at 15 minutes to 30 minutes of walking at least three times per week it sounds a lot to somebody who tell me about that mother from my foot all day yes but you're not exercising you're working that's two different things when you're exercising you're focused on what you're doing you're you're briskly going at it you're moving all your muscles, getting your heart pumping at a different rate, getting your muscles saying, yeah, man, we're working, your boss a good sweat, yes? Time hot, so don't you tell me, but I sweat right through the day. No, no, no. You're working things differently when you're exercising. And if you can find, even in your lunchtime, I try to find different ways for different patients. You tell me, depends on where you work, how your house set up, just walk around the house if you can. Go outside because you're afraid of what outside going on with. You're at work and then have steps. You finish, have your lunch. Go and go walk up two other steps and come back. You'd be surprised how much work, how much exercise that is. Not work, exercise. Um, stress level. Stress is very high these days. Everything you talk about here, somebody says stress. Stress deteriorates our body. So if we can manage our stress levels, if we can get rid of the stress, can we reduce the stress? One way or the other. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Some stresses are very difficult to get rid of, and I understand. So it's a matter of how we individually respond to our stresses so that we can cope with life and not be so stressed out. One of the things to manage stress, exercise. If you really want somebody bothering you, ignore them. Go and go walk. You'll be surprised after the 15 minutes, you'll forget what the person look like. Reduce your stress, go walk them out. 
walk them out. Got it? <laughs> All right, we spoke about the little to no postmenopausal hormone therapy. If you don't have to get it, you don't take it. But if symptoms are so bad, go ahead, take it for a short term, do what you have to do, monitor yourselves. All right. Annual mammograms and ultrasounds. We tend not to do the mammograms after 35, well, before 35 years old because of how dense the breast tissues are. So a younger person's breast, they're firmer, which we all understand this, full of breast tissue. As you get older, it's a lot less. And so after 35, we do the mammogram. But if before you reach 35, we're having an issue, we'd be recommending a breast ultrasound. If something is seen on the ultrasound, then we can move forward to a mammogram. But the mammogram is not the first thing before the 35, right? What's before 35? And after 35? All right. Yes, there is, I heard of the MRI that can be done. There is a new, there's a 3D mammogram that is out now. It's done on Ripon Road. What's that place name again? Uh, radiation Oncology. Huh? The 3D? No, it's on Ripon Road. And I had a presentation last week on the breast cancer. And by the time I said that, there was somebody in the group who said she did it and it was so good. So it's not no press down. People talk about the pain and the, the discomfort of doing the mammogram, not with the 3D. It's just how you position the breast and it gets all the imaging done without the discomfort. So technology again, it's improving. It can be done, all right? Preventative breast surgery. I mean, if you feel like, okay, I think I've had, you look at all of the risk factors I just gave you, and you think you have too many, and you think you have the funds to just go ahead and just, <laughs> just, just step ahead of the game and remove the breast, that's also up to you. Preventative breast surgery. There is a actor, Angelina Jolie, she did her tests, and when she realized that she was at risk, she just went ahead and did them. But remember I said, if you have money to just go ahead and do, yes, soon get there. <laughs> if you want to just go and take them off and get a brand new secondhand breast, no problem, right? Breast, brother Vernella can borrow you? I know. Because you, you started it, so let me just continue. I think it's probably easier for a man to... Right, for a man to, <laughs> for a man to examine themselves up here than for the woman, right? So he's not going to strip for us, no. He's just going to demonstrate, because there are some women who have smaller breasts, flat chests, and there are some who have a lot. So we're going to demonstrate, right? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I like when you stand in front of a mirror. If you stand in front of a mirror, you get to see what you're doing and get to see what you look like. Because remember, there's a part I said, changes in the size and the appearance of the breast. You're not going to know how it changes if you don't see it. Right, you can only see up top. You can't see around and so mirror, using a mirror. So you'd stand and you look and you say, which side looks bigger? So you know which side looks bigger from get go. You'd be able to see if there's an actual lump, if the skin change, you can see all of that. When you're ready, we're gonna start for me. We're gonna use, raise, no. Raise one hand. <laughs> Put it behind your head. Amen. Left hand no is what you're going to use to examine the right side. So we're going to go in circle. What you're doing when you do this, when you raise this arm, you're removing the chest wall muscles from the breast tissue. So it is easier to examine the breast itself and not the whole chest wall. Right. 
So the left hand now is going to do all the work. So it's gonna go around in circles using here, using here. Oh, right here. Yes, just the, the ball here. And you go around and you're feeling, going around in circles, feeling for any abnormality, whether it's a lump, a painful discomfort, or something just not feel right, right there, so? I didn't say that, sir. <laughs> Once you've gone all around, then you go to the middle, where the black area is, where the nipple is, not just the nipple, but the entire black area. So you're going to go around in circles in that part as well, because we can't forget that part. When that's finished, you go all the way up into the armpit, still doing the circular motions, up into the armpit, all the way up. Amen. Yes. Right? And when you're finished, we're finished with, when we're finished, then you're going to use both hands. You don't have to do this part, though, but the both hands and squeeze the breast because you want to see if anything is coming from the nipple. You have to look. Look at it. Right, so you're gonna squeeze from the base and squeeze towards the nipple. You wanna see what, whether it is water, milk, blood, something. But we wanna see nothing. When that's done, we'll move to the next side. Is that a question? I was asking um, Dr. Matthews, is it the same for the men in terms of, would they have that, you know, they don't have Yes. They would do this side as well. Yes. Okay, that's right. Yes. You know, men tend to say breast cancer is only for women. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> I said it. How many times I said it since I've been here? Not just the women, but the men. Do not forget our men. So, and I, the men would be equal to what we call a flat-chested woman. So she, she don't have no holy for breast, but it's, breast tissue is still there. Same thing for the men. Breast tissue is still there. So you have to know your breasts, sir. And everybody else needs to know your breasts. Okay? And the examination is the same. Male or female. And when you're done with that right side, left side it is. So we'll put up the... That's right. And we go in circle with the left. Go around. Then you go to the middle, to the black area. Then up into the armpit, and then you come back down and you squeeze. If you follow that trend, you won't miss any part, angle of the breast. Thank you so much. Give him a hand. <laughs> the, what I also like to say, husbands, your wives you are allowed to examine your wife's breast. Wives, you are allowed to examine your husband's breasts. Only. Amen. Right. So how, how we do this, remember, it's the same procedure, you know, but instead of standing, your husband or wife will be lying on the bed with both hands behind their head. Both hands behind their head. So we're still removing the, the muscle from the chest wall. And you go one breast at a time. You go around in circles. You go to the middle. Then you go into the armpit. And then you squeeze. So it's a part of ensuring that your spouse's breasts are healthy. You're helping them. Securing them. Amen. All right. <laughs> we spoke about the investigations. Yes, breast examination is one. That's the first thing. We do the breast ultrasounds. We do the mammograms. When, we do, the, when do we do the ultrasounds again? All right. And the mammograms are? Cool. If we find something, then the next step is a biopsy. Depend, we normally do an ultrasound guided fine needle biopsy. What that means, under the ultrasound, you know the same machine that they use to, some people think they only do ultrasound for, to check babies, but no, you use an ultrasound for anywhere on the body. 
So it's the same machine, same gel they put on, and they use that so they can see past the skin. So they would use that ultrasound, find the lump, then insert the needle through the skin to take a sample of the lump. That's a biopsy. So they'd send that to the lab to see if it's benign, remember that word, or malignant. Benign is a normal lump, malignant is a cancerous lump. Good. We spoke up, I, I mentioned about the genetic screening, because that's what Angelina Joni did when she found out that she was at high risk for breast cancer. The BRCA, one and two, it only means breast cancer one, breast cancer two. Those are two genes that they look for when they do your, your genetic screening. And we do have this done in Jamaica. So we're not, we're not that third world as some people think. We do have it, we can get it done. So if you wanna get it done, it's privately. See what your, what your genetic makeup is like where the breast cancer is concerned, you would be able to tell if you're at a higher risk for breast cancer and then you'll know what you want to do. Yes? As far um, as believe she did it, um, Novelet Mills, mm -hmm. she found out that she had it and she did the same thing like Angeline, removed the stuff and took it back. Yes, there you go. So it, it is, what did you say? Yeah, remove the breast. And all is not lost. When you remove the breast, it can be replaced. Remember I said a brand new second hand? Yes, so you can get second hand. Plastic surgery is offered in Jamaica. It sounds, yes, you might watch TV and you see all of the expensive things and you say plastic surgery, uh-uh. No, it's not just about cosmetics. It is, it, has to, it can be done with breast cancer situations as well because we, I used to work in plastic surgery. So we've done breast replacement, breast enhancement after a breast cancer diagnosis and surgery has been done. It has been done, it is being done, and it will continue to be done, can be done. So you don't have to feel uneven or unbalanced for that matter, right? Um, we talk about the different stages of cancer. It goes from zero to four. The zero to one, they're kind of close. That's when you, it's really, really small and it's still in the breast tissue. Really, really small, like three, three millimeters. You know how small that is? Really small. You can find three millimeters? That's, yeah. Huh? Less than a centimeter. There you go, sir. Okay, once you get to the lymph nodes, lymph nodes are what we call wax and cannon. You all know what your wax and cannons are? Those are some little lumps that come up anywhere on the body. Once there is an infection and your body is trying to fight it, your lymph nodes are gonna gather them. That's why they're there. So if there's an inflammation, infection, which is a breast cancer, they're gonna pull right to the lymph nodes. Where are those lymph nodes? Normally, under the armpit or somewhere in the chest wall towards this area, right? So when I tell you to do the breast examination and come into the armpit, it's because you're checking for the breast tissue and also for lymph nodes, the wax and cannons. They're up there, so you have to feel for things. So when we get to stage two, it's because the lymph nodes are now involved, your wax and cannon involved, right? Stage three, the cancer is now to the skin. Or what's behind the breast? Your chest wall, right? Your ribs. So once it gets to the back or to the front, skin or chest wall, we'll get into stage three. Once it goes anywhere outside of that, it's stage four. Anybody can tell me where they think is another place that the cancer can go? Where it's, when I say stage four and spread, where you think it can go? Lungs, brain, bone, good. Liver, that's what I was waiting on. Yes, liver. So you know from it reach liver, any other organs in the tummy, it can spread there as well. Once there's a spread outside of the breast, you're at stage three or stage four. I have pictures of, no, 
Next, next slide. Okay, that's a little small. I'm sorry. So it was just showing you, if you could see that blue, no, go back, back, back. No, back, back, back. Yes, right there. To your, this side, left, right. So you see that blue dot right there? That's just showing you an example of where it would be in the breast. If you can see the little green dots around the side, those are examples of where the, the lymph nodes are in the breast. So normally, anywhere in the breast, zero to one and it should be small, less than a centimeter. It can go up to two centimeters and still be at stage one. The, yeah. So the second one is showing some blue dots where the green dots would be. And that is when it's gone to the lymph nodes. Where is, which stage is, is lymph node spread? Anybody remember? Two. From it is still in the breast, it is zero to one. From it start to move out, we start adding numbers. Lymph nodes, two. Skin, three. Everywhere else, four. All right. Next picture, please. Next, next, okay. Uh, all right, so here is what another picture of the stage two. I know you can't see it so well, and I'm very sorry about that, but it is showing you this red dot in the middle. That's just the example of the tumor, the breast cancer. Around it is showing you the breast tissue, the fatty tissue, everything, and then it goes back to, towards the, the chest wall, where you see the lymph nodes and the cancerous lymph nodes. So that is stage two, as we said. Next, next slide. And then stage three, when it goes, spreads to the chest wall. See that? You can see that one? All right. And of course, all of this is, it, the cancer is also getting bigger. So that's also a part of the staging, the size of the cancer. All right. Next one, please. That's an example of what it might or can look like when it gets to the skin. Just a little, it looks like a mole. It can look like a mole. And of course, that could also be just regular skin cancer. So that's a whole different topic. If you see something on your body that, one, one second, let me just finish this line. If you see something on your body that was not there before, don't just watch it unless the doctor says, it's okay, let's watch it. If it wasn't there before, check it out. All right? Yes, Sister Martha. Um, what is the on lighter skin people? On lighter skin people, you can see red. For us as dark people, you might not see red. It can look darker, you can have a black spot. It can be. It's purplish. Like somebody give you a good hit on it. <laughs> yes. But the redness is normally seen on fairer skin people. Yes, yeah, so if you know that that is your mole, then okay. But if you suddenly develop a mole, like you never had that <laughs> all 40 years of your life. Where is this mole coming from? Where is it going? So we have to check it out, right? Where are we? Next, next slide. And then stage four. Next picture. Next slide. Right. Stage four, anywhere at all. So remember we spoke about the lungs, the liver, the brain, the bone. Once it's outside of the breast, we're at stage four. So it's just different stages to look for. Next slide. All right. So the, why that looks so dark? All right. So this is basically showing you what your survival rates are like at the different stages of breast cancer. 
of course, the earlier, earlier you, you find out, the smaller the stage, the better the survival rate, right? And that is why our survival rates have been increasing because more patients have been finding them out in the earlier stages between zero and two. So we're getting 198, 88%, 88% survival rate up to stage two. So it, it's, really, it's really not that bad. It's just the mental trauma to say, oh my God, there's a cancer. But it is survivable. Right? We just have to get it as early as, as possible. Okay. I apologize for the next slide, but reality is, this is what it can look like. Next. You can see that? You basically don't have a breast anymore. You have a rock on your chest. Badly discolored. Looks like something you just want to take off and throw away. This is where it can go, unfortunately. All right? We can move to the next slide for those who can't stomach it too much. Just move. We'll continue talking. I don't know why you don't want to use a mic, you know, Sister Martha. Because we can't hear you. That's all she's saying. These, these, that, that picture that we just saw, unsightly picture, is that the usual? Because I've seen breasts with stage four, and it, it didn't even say anything. End stage, End stage, stage four. I did say it, is a, it can look like that, so you don't have to look like this. You don't have to, but it can. I've had patients that come, and this is what I'm seeing. And you know, there's a, our, our, our Jamaican attitude of saying, boy, I'm going to just watch it. How much more are you going to watch it? This? This? You know what I mean? There's so much of the movie you can watch and know more. Come on. Boy, <sighs> yes. Um, I remember once you have abnormal skin, there's always a chance of infections. Um, I've had patients that come with half of that picture because the other half was filled with little people. You know, you know what I call little people? Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'm not going to talk more about it because I don't like them. So the better you can treat yourself, the better it will be for you. All right? <laughs> okay. All right. So the next slide are just pictures of mammogram. The mammogram pictures, what they look like when they come out. So they come out as black and white, different shades of black to white. And it's for us to determine where, what is abnormal. Now I had a question to say, then if you can see the furthest to your left, you can't see that, can you? Okay, because today it might be at 0.1 millimeter, like really small. Where you do the mammogram today and it looked normal. And then you do the mammogram next year and you say then, what we do it last year and it was all right, so how come? But guess what? Everything has a baby stage and then it gets to adult stage, right? So you could have done the mammogram when you were at 0.1 or less than when it was undetectable, because I can't see that, but they said that it is there. So the, the experts would be able to tell you that a grain of sand. Thank you very much. She said you saw it as a grain of sand and now it's a big stone, okay? <laughs> so if you did a mammogram today and two months later, you're feeling something abnormal in your breast, you go back to the doctor and the doctor said, but we're going to have to do a mammogram. Don't just say, but I did one two months ago. Yes, but you're having an issue now. With me? You're having an issue now? We're going to figure it out. No. What is going on? No. Things grow. Some cancers grow slowly. 
slowly. And some, them just get some steroid and just whoosh. whoosh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next slide. Top of our list for treatment, prayer and fasting. However, prayer and fasting is not the end of the line. I know that the Bible tells us to pray, bring all things to the Lord through prayer and fasting. However, if there wasn't a need for the intervention of the doctor, the Bible would not also have said, if you are sick, seek a physician. Okay? If everyone was going to be healed, I would not be here. Okay? Not because the doctor says you have this diagnosis and you're not accepting it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I am no issue with that. But I'm going by what is in front of me. So if this says there is a suspicion for breast cancer, go and pray about it, yes. But also do what I ask you to do. When you've prayed and you've got your word from the Lord that you are healed, I am also waiting on the manifestation of your healing. So when you do the result and it come back and I say, oh, it's gone, 